are some of the elements required to build the ultimate display um, here in computing. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here. Right now, you can press capture on the side. So this is um, actually a video done by the uh, Envision folks, and uh, here you can actually see that there's a there's a child. She walks up in the middle of a classroom, goes up to the whiteboard, and she's interacting with someone on the other side of the world. But she's interacting as if this person is literally uh, on the other side of this pane of glass, and they're able to you know see the person's hand, not just what's touching the screen, but away from the screen as well. Uh, this person feels like they're actually looking at the person um, uh, from multiple views as well as looking into the room with perspective. So, and, and so that actually requires a lot of wizardry that is not evident or not obvious in this video. So as you can see, when that, when that, when that child put her hand up on the, video, on the video, you saw her hand and you saw everything else underneath it that, that happened. So one of the questions, obviously, that is that we're trying to ask is what's after touch? What's after, you know, just touch screens that only see what's on top? And um, obviously, the, the, what's after it is, is the space above the screen. And, and you can see here one of the things that we've done is created a, a little bit of a platform to work and, and uh, uh, play around with gestures or interactions that happen above a screen. And we've done this, it's a cute little optical trick that we've done. We've actually um, taken a retroreflective screen and a, a bridal mesh um, and we're projecting down onto it. And this retroreflective screen actually sends some of the light to your eye, but most of the light actually gets back up to the camera. And the camera, as a result, gets a really strong shadow with any of the objects that gets placed in front of it. Which, so it's very easy for computer vision to take an image of something and actually manipulate and do gestures from As you can see from that demo, it's, it's, not some, it's very cumbersome sort of setup. You have a front projection, you got a camera that's really tall, tall right? Um, and so one of the things that we're working on um, is, uh, a, is a very special optic that's called Wedge. And it allows us to image through a display in a very thin and flat form factor. So you can actually see, this is, my, this is an image of my hand that's over here, and you can see that the prototype is only this thick. Not like that, right? And it's still an image of my hand, I'm still able to do computer vision for it. In fact, there are no shadows or occlusion, and what this is is actually just a, basically an OLED display that we can see through. Uh, but it can also be an LCD or anything like that. And so what's doing the magic here um, is this piece of plastic. It looks basically just like this. Right, you know, just go on top. It's just a, it's a solid piece of acrylic, and this piece of acrylic has the, the shape has the mathematics already built into it to, to um, uh, uh, determine when a ray um, exits the, the material. In fact, you can actually see what's happening. So when I when I inject a ray in here, what's doing is it's actually bouncing via a principle called total internal reflection. You can actually see the zig zigzag. And any time it hits the surface, um, it's below the, you know, the, uh, the critical point of exit, and it actually continues to travel down. It's called a waveguide. A lot of waveguides can do that, but what's special about this waveguide is that it also maintains the image, the coherence of, of, of the image or the ray that it gets injected into it. And that's what allows us to actually put a camera at this end and actually image a screen. Where if you put an M, a, a camera down, any traditional normal waveguide, you'd just, just get noise or crud. Um, and so what you're doing here is actually changing the angle of injection is actually a function of the exit point of the material, of the, of the ray. This demo does just that. There are an array of LEDs here. We have a Kinect camera to track you. And this is the world's first flat auto stereoscopic 3D display. And so I invite you to have a seat here and, uh, you know, you should be able to see a 3D image um, as soon as you sit down. And what we do is we find your face. And, and we shoot an image to your left eye, and we shoot an image to your right eye. And, the, and remember how I was steering that flashlight around? That's exactly what we're doing. We're actually flashing on those LEDs on and off really fast. And when you were shooting the left eye image, right, we, uh, we, we, put, the left, uh, we put the left eye image on the, on the LCD. This demo does just that. There are an array of LEDs here. We have a Kinect camera to track you. And this is the world's first flat auto stereoscopic 3D display. And so I invite you to have a seat here, and uh, you know you should be able to see a 3D image um, as soon as you sit down. And what we do is we find your face, and and we shoot an image to your left eye, and we shoot an image to your right eye. And the, and remember how I was steering that flashlight around? That's exactly what we're doing. We're actually flashing on those LEDs on and off really fast. And when you were shooting the left eye image, right? We uh, we we put the left uh, we put the left eye image on the on the LCD.
So in this demo, we're going to have two people standing in front of a display, but they're going to be looking at two completely different images, just like your left eye and your right eye were, were doing before. What's cool? What do you see? The teapot still? Yes. All right, I'm going to trade, trade spots with me while I'm looking at the display. Just, just keep going. What do you see? The teapot. Exactly. So we're tracking you and staying the image, which which kind of shows you we're not cheating. And we have the ability on MSR to steer where audio goes. We have the ability to steer where light goes. Put the two together, and now you have your own kind of personal viewing experience. And I can still share, you know, my time with you, uh, you know, and enjoy it, but but watch different content. She is. <laughs> share time, but not anything else. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this should feel like should feel like you're looking through a pane of glass as you move your head around so so move and so i'll give you the motion like so the kind of the trick is to go like this you got you can actually look up in the ceiling you can look down like this move off to the left etc what would be the first step for, for in terms of like a, like you know where would you take this with this first step of high volume manufacturing what would you be doing with yeah this is a fantastic question that if you come back in maybe six months, I'll be able to answer because it's um, it, it, it I can't unveil it right now. I'm super but, excited. But you actually have ideas of like where we know we are working on it now. It just seems further out. Um, this stuff, yes, yes, yes. So like so there. So imagine simpler applications that could use some of these these qualities. And this would be just the seeing through displays. For <laughs> How about you? I mean, but this would be, in, in particular, the second thing we saw, the seeing through displays that you were talking about that interior. Can't, can't say. I wish I could answer that question. Well, uh, but I'm, I'm in just terms mean, of manufacturing cost, are you talking about a high-end enterprise type product, or are you talking about a mass consumer product? Um, uh, like I said, a piece of plastic, high volume injection molding. Uh, the components are not all that different than what you see in a traditional display. Really? So doesn't cost much more than a typical computer screen in terminal. The day it should it. Huh? No. In the wow. end of the day it should it. This changes the web. This changes everything. If we can get it working. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not saying we're there. We're working on it. Part of working on it. But a 3D it. web is quite easy to envision in this context, isn't it? Everything. I mean, 3D everything, right? Yeah. yeah.